Google Calendar is a well-trusted app, but could Notion be its replacement? Stick around to find out. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. What I'm going to do through this video is look at the main uses of Google Calendar and try and compare that to what you could build in Notion. Bearing in mind, you can build your Notion workspace specific to your workflow, whereas Google Calendar is very much you get what you're given. Looking at the obvious to start with, there is a date associated with the task or the event, and you can have a time associated with the task or event. Then, to move the date, you can simply click and drag whether that is an all-day task in Google Calendar. You can click and drag that to a different date. And when you go into Notion, if you have a database in a calendar view, you can do the same thing. You can have a date on any task or event. You can have a time on any task or event. And when you click and drag on that task or event, it will move the date appropriately. To add a new event into Notion, you could just click on the Add button on any of the days, very similar to what you can do in Google Calendar. You would get that pop-up window, and then you can choose whether there is an end date, whether there is a time, and what those numbers are. When in Google Calendar, you can actually change the occurrence of an event or a task, because you can add a recurring occurrence, which could be one week, two weeks, every other day, and there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to recurring tasks or events. In Notion, at the time of making this video, there isn't currently a native way to make recurring tasks into Notion, so you'd either have to move the task down to the next week, when you've done the task, when you've done the event, or you could use one of the numerous setups that are shared throughout YouTube, and I have a couple of videos on my channel showing that, but specifically for events, you would only be able to see one at a time, which is definitely a drawback. When it comes to inviting guests to your event, to your meeting, you can do that natively inside of Google. So you can search up their email and it will send them an email reminder or invite to the event or meeting. This will also add the event to their calendar if they accept the invitation. Now in Notion, you can invite guests to a specific meeting or task, but it does mean that the other person has to be inside your workspace, otherwise they won't get the notification. You could send an email to remind them about the meeting, but that would go outside of Notion, which obviously, ideally you wouldn't want to do. So if you're looking to arrange a meeting with someone outside of your business, outside of your company, or essentially outside of your workspace, Google Guests Invite would work much better. But if everyone is in your Notion workspace, which if you're working in Notion with a team, they would be, then you could just invite them through the guest property. When it comes to taking notes in the event, maybe you need to take notes during the event or plan things ahead of time. In Google Calendar, you do have a space to write whatever you need, maybe some quick notes. You can link files in and you can also attach links elsewhere. But because of the way Notion works, Notion actually has much more flexibility when it comes to planning out a meeting or an event. So you can see this is just a very quick example, but in this event I have the email and any other associated emails that could be relevant for this event I can link in. I also have a Zoom link, so if I wanted to go straight to the meeting I can from there. I've also embedded a Google map if need be to see where I'm going, to see where the meeting is, or for any other information to do with the meeting. And again, because it's a page, you can write any note that you want. And it also gives you the full flexibility of what Notion gives you. So you could embed your planner inside of the event. So inside the event, you can see what else you either need to do during that day for tasks what your team need to do during that day for tasks, how far your progress is for all of your OKRs. You could have everything inside of that meeting to see right there and then. Moving on to the calendar options in Google Calendar, you can create different calendars, i.e. different subjects of events or different areas or buckets of things you need to do, whether that is home, business, events, reminders, tasks. You can create different calendars for different things. You can then toggle those calendars on and off depending on what events or tasks you want to see at that specific time. Now you can do the exact same thing in Notion. You can just add a select property into your tasks or events database. And then you can filter for whatever event or calendar it is, whether that's home, business, and you can add as many as you want to that list. 
You could show one at a time, two at a time. You can show any calendars that you want, exactly the same as Google Calendar. However, in Google Calendar, you can actually subscribe to other calendars, browse other calendars that are public, which in Notion you can't do. So if you're looking to keep track of other calendars, other people's calendars, then Google Calendar is definitely the way to go. When it comes to adding in a location, because Google Calendar is linked with Google, you can just type in the location and it will search it up for you. In Notion, because of the way the pages work, you could have a link to the location in your page, such as a Google Map embed, but that does mean you have to go external, grab the link and put it into Notion. Now for some, that may not be an issue, but for others that may take too long. And it's a very similar process when you're trying to link it with online meetings, such as Zoom, Google Meets, anything like that. In Google Calendar, you can do it by clicking one button and everything is set. In Notion, you'd have to set that meeting up and then copy the link and put it into the page. So from a workflow standpoint, if you have numerous meetings that you're going to be doing online, i.e. Zoom, Google Meets, and you need to constantly do them throughout the day, Google Calendar shaves off those couple of seconds by being able to do it in one or two clicks. If, however, you don't have many external meetings that are new meetings that aren't just recurring, then because the Zoom call or the Google Meet is a recurring event, i.e. a recurring link, you can embed that into your event into Notion and everything will stay the same. When looking at Google Calendar in a week view, you can actually see another time zone. So if you're looking to book an event with someone across a time zone, you can see that time zone. And in Notion, you can do the exact same thing. The only difference is in Notion, you need to know what the time zone difference is to set that formula up. Whereas in Google, you can just click on the time zone. So you have to find it in the long list and then it's all done. Either way, as soon as it's set up, they both work exactly the same. When you're going through Google Calendar, they give you lots of different viewing options, i.e. daily, weekly, monthly, an agenda, a schedule, or you could customize the certain amount of days you want to see, i.e. 3, 4, 5, etc. These views are also accessible via shortcut on your keyboard, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. In Notion, you can do it in a similar way, but not quite as intuitively as you may have thought. So you can create different calendar views for different calendars, different dates, different events, different tasks, but this will always be in a month view. You could then create a board view, which shows you weekly, i.e. Monday to Sunday. You could have that just Monday to Wednesday and filter that out. Then when you move those tasks across, it will move it in the calendar view. You could filter for this week, next week, two weeks, three weeks. You can choose because you can create the views that you want to see. Then you can also see it in a daily view by using that database and filtering it for the date that you want. So today, tomorrow, the next seven days. And this is where you can choose how many days you want to see in the agenda style view. You could change the list view to another view. It's entirely up to you because that's the way Notion works. The main drawback of using this style and wanting to see all of your events in a weekly, daily and monthly view into Notion does mean you have to understand the system behind it, i.e. the week beginning date and then showing that in the agenda date for the month. So whereas Google Calendar is very intuitive and you can just see daily, weekly, monthly and yearly views, in Notion you'd have to understand how Notion works to be able to optimize the views you want to see. But with that optimization does give you customization which Google Calendar doesn't necessarily give you. The main benefit I see is I can see a daily agenda view at the same time as the monthly view. And you can in Google Calendar, but in the monthly view, you only get a dot. You can't see everything else that's going on at the same time. Whereas in Notion, I can have today's view, yesterday's view, tomorrow's view, next seven days view, and a month view all seen at the same time. And then I can have specific views in those filtered views to change things as I see fit. Whereas in Google Calendar, you'd have to use a shortcut to go backwards and forwards between the views. When you have completed a task in Google Calendar, i.e. the time has gone past when that day was due, it will actually go light. So you can see the time has gone light because there's a dot and the task for that day has also gone light. But there's no way to say you have completed that task or event if you didn't actually go because it would always go light when the time goes past that event. 
Whereas in Notion, you can set it up in any way that you want. In this example, I've just used a tick box. So when I tick the tick box, I know I've been to the event and then I can filter whatever the view is to say I do want to see it or I don't want to see it. And I think that's one of the advantages of using Notion is you can choose what you do and don't see. Whereas in Google Calendar, you would see all of those events and tasks on that day. It would just go light when you've completed them. Whereas in Notion, you can actually filter those things out. So you only see what you need to see. Now, again, this is a personal preference thing, but I personally don't want to see things that I've done. The reason I bring up task management with Google Calendar is because when you're organizing a meeting or an event and you have a really, really busy day with a load of tasks, you don't really want to put that event on the same day as all of those tasks. So seeing how many tasks you have to do for a day helps you organize whether you're going to have a busy day or a not so busy day and when to organize meetings, when not to organize meetings and when potentially to move tasks around. If you want to do that in Google Calendar, you can either use an event as a task, like I've shared before, but that then doesn't carry over and it's very difficult to link the event to I've done that because it's time-based rather than completed-based. So what you could do is use tasks, which are in Google, and when you add tasks into Google, it's the same as adding an event. So every single task you have to add into tasks, which will go into your calendar. And when you do that, you can add subtasks into those tasks, but they are treated exactly the same as any other task or event. So you'd have to add the subtask into the task and add the date and add the time to that task. Now the task doesn't actually carry over. So when you have that daily agenda list, it will stay on that same day. So you may not have completed the task two, three, four days ago, but it won't show up on today's view because it's not for today. Reminders, however, do. Reminders will carry over for the day. So you could use reminders as tasks, but that means that every single task is going to be a reminder. So you'd have to set a reminder for every task you do, which, depending on your workflow, could be quite tedious. An advantage of putting tasks in Google Calendar, though, is because you can have recurring events, i.e. recurring tasks. So you can have a task, maybe a habit task, and put that in your Google Calendar, set the recurring need, and it will show all the way through whenever the end date is that you put in. Now, task management can be done in so many different ways in Notion, and I have a few videos on my channel going through task management. But when comparing completing tasks and doing tasks, to Google Calendar, you can tick the task off, you can attach the task to subtasks, you can have subtasks in the task, you can have subtasks related to the task, you can have a list of tasks and only see the tasks for today, for today and yesterday, for the next seven days, you can choose the view that you want to see for all of those tasks. Then if you wanted to have a view where it filtered all of the tasks that you completed, so again, looking at those events, you only want to see the tasks that you need to do, which for me works in my workflow, then you can filter that view for those tasks that need to be done. Now, the first reason I choose to use tasks in Notion rather than Google Calendar is because you can relate tasks to projects and project management is not something you can do in Google Calendar because that's not what the app is for. Whereas Notion, you can have your projects and your tasks together. This means you can track which project the task is related to straight away and you can go into the task and that will go straight to the project. And the second advantage of having your project management in Notion related to your task management is you can have templates, which basically means you can preset all of those tasks. So if you have standing operating procedures or a list of tasks that you will go through or subtasks you will go through repeatedly for a process, you can have that all preset and then drag those into the task database so that every single task that you would do for that project is already set, ready and done within a couple of clicks rather than having to set all of those tasks in Google Calendar as either an event, as a recurring task, as a task or subtask, and having to add all of the dates and times for those. For me, those two things speed up my workflow so much that the recurring tasks in Notion, which I've done a few videos on, actually the workaround I use works for me. And I would much rather save all of that time creating those tasks than just having recurring tasks working. However, using those recurring tasks is extremely useful for time blocking. 
So if you time block regularly and you want to have a specific time blocked out for Monday to Friday or whatever recurring event you have, then you can do that quite easily in Google Calendar by setting the event as a time block, then making the event recurring for whenever you need to do that event, i.e. that time block, and then all of your time blocks will be set and you can also change that time block and put the event in where the event appears and it will show in Google Calendar that you have an event in that slot. This does mean that some of the views in Google Calendar does get kind of blocked up, but because you can use different calendars, you can have a time blocking calendar to block out your time and then an events calendar. And you can choose to see one or the other or both at the same time. Now in Notion, because databases aren't specific for time, unlike Google Calendar, you would have to make a specific database for those times. How you choose to view that is entirely up to you because you can create what you want. This is just one example of time blocking in Notion. So I've actually created a table view of a database and then blocked those times out. Then you can change the view for the morning, the evening, the afternoon, and you can add in tasks or events by mentioning them in the text property. Now, the main downside to this is you can only see a week, so it would be this week. And for next week, if something was to change, you would have to add that in every single time something changes. So this would be useful if you have a consistent time block and you have open spaces, or if you're extremely regimented and you know exactly what you're going to do every single week. But for me, I personally don't time block. But if I was to time block, I would go and use Google Calendar for time blocking because Notion currently doesn't have a good and efficient way to do time blocking from what I've seen and from what I've experienced. Something else to keep in mind is that if you are looking at your events or your time blocking consistently on your phone, then you'd need to look at one, the views you get on your phone and two, the speed. And if you wanted to see all of those different views in Notion, the day, the week, the month, they are all different spaces, so you'd have to scroll up and down to see them all, so you lose the flexibility the PC view gives you. And the calendar view in Notion on your phone is quite restrictive because you can only see the dots. Whereas you can see everything in Google Calendar, the month view, the week view, the day view, it works better on phone, and the speed of Google Calendar on phone is also much better than Notion. So in summary, when you're looking at Google Calendar, recurring events is obviously an advantage. Guest invites for external individuals is an advantage. Having the ability to subscribe and view other people's calendar is an advantage. Being able to link your location and link an online call through Zoom or Google Meet through Google Calendar is an advantage. The views in Google Calendar are very intuitive Time blocking is much easier and it is much quicker and easier to view on the phone. But when looking at Notion, notes from the event can be much more in depth. Planning beforehand can be much easier to do inside of the event. You can search in Notion for the event through all of the different views and relations you have in the space. Completing events and tasks gives you a different experience when viewing your events and tasks in a calendar. Task management is much easier to do in Notion when you're relating your tasks to events. The views in Notion are much more customizable. Task creation speed is much better for those tasks you are repeatedly doing. And the ability to link your events, tasks and notes to your projects, goals and more gives you much more flexibility outside of just planning the event. Now, there is definitely a place for using Google Calendar alongside Notion, but that's very dependent on your workflow. If you want to learn more about Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.